Hey everyone, welcome to what's probably the very last of these series of AP practice problems. Uh, this one was released yesterday morning and it's AP practice problem 2B. So if you remember from the last couple of ones we've done, the 2B problem is meant to be a 15 minute problem. And as you might expect, uh, you're gonna be short on time on this one as well. There are five parts which gives you three, about three minutes per part of a problem. So that's a pretty aggressive schedule, especially for an AP problem. But then again, we don't know what these are gonna look like. And I'm gonna start off by saying good luck to you on Tuesday and last bit of practice. So let's get going. Okay, 2002 APBC, practice problem number two. The graph of the derivative f, sorry, the graph of f prime, the derivative of a differentiable function called f, consists of five linear segments and a semicircle shown in the figure above. Pause right here. Segment one, straight line. Segment two, segment three, segment four, and segment five. Those are straight line segments, and remember if you ever need the equation of those, it is going to be y equals mx plus b. So you may want to you know, write down the slopes of each of those lines just to start off with, just to be sure. Anyways, the functions f and f prime are defined on the closed interval from negative 5 to 10, and it's known that f6 equals negative 1. Now, f of 6 being negative 1, right over here, that's the fact that you're going to use in at least one, I think, two different parts of this problem. So make sure you have that handy whenever you're asked about f of 6, it is going to be equal to negative 1. Five parts of this problem, like I said, part A, find the minimum value of f on the closed interval from negative 5 to negative 10, justify your answer. Part B, let g of x be sine of 3 minus f prime of x, find g prime of 6, and C, let h of x be the particular solution to the differential equation dy dx equals y minus f prime of x over x, Ooh. with h of 5 being equal to 6. So that's a new little piece of information there as well. Use Euler's method. Starting at x equals 5 with two steps of equal size to approximate h of 3. Okay, so right now I'm getting my chart of Euler's problem. Our Euler's method to get started with. Hopefully you learned how to do this in a chart. That is the best way to organize your work here. Part D, for zero is less than equal to 10, this is, sorry, for T between zero and 10 seconds, a particle moves along a horizontal axis with velocity V measured in meters per second, where V is equal to F prime of T. So for part D, this is a graph of F prime. And T is measured in seconds. Evaluate 0 to 10 of the absolute value of V of T. Use correct units and explain the meaning of this value in context of the problem. Um, maybe you recognize that formula. Maybe you don't. It's a pretty well-used formula. I think I've seen it in pretty much every AP tests that we do, uh, at least the free response section, uh, if not definitely the multiple choice, although again, you don't ever get to see all the multiple choice questions. Part E, let k equal 2x minus the integral from 6 to x ft dt. Write a third degree Taylor polynomial to k about x equals 6. So here's your Taylor polynomial question. You're just being asked to write it, although they're going to be a little bit, um, how do I say this? A little bit, uh, I don't know. You'll need a little bit of math knowledge to get k prime, k double prime, k triple prime. So they made it a little bit more difficult for you to do this, but not too much difficult. I don't think too much difficult. Part A. We're asked to find a minimum value of f on the closed interval from negative 5 to 10. Justify your answer, of course. 
Remember, justify your answer means you can do this in either mathematical equations or in a written explanation. explanation. So the first thing to realize is that you're looking at the graph of a derivative, f prime. So now we can use all the knowledge that we learned from the graph of derivative problems and uh, say, well, we're going to find a minimum. Great. That's always been the candidate test. So let's try start off by doing the candidate test. The minimum value has to occur at the endpoint or at a critical number. And that critical number should be a relative minimum. So they're actually doing you a little bit of a favor by telling you that to look for a minimum and not a minimum and a maximum. So there's only going to be one uh, minimum value. Let's take a look at the graph again. Uh, there are, are the two endpoints at x equals negative 5 and x equals 10. And then we'll have a look at the uh, critical values. The critical values are any place where the x or the y coordinate of the derivative is equal to 0. So you got critical values at x equals 0, x equals 4, and x equals 6. Now those aren't all relative minimum. If you take a look at this, the derivative is going from positive to negative. Again, f prime is positive and then f prime is negative. So that's going to be a relative maximum. Over here at x equals 4, f prime is negative, f prime is negative. So since the derivative is going from negative to negative, that is not going to be a relative minimum either. However, at x equals 6, the derivative f prime is going from negative to positive. So that is a relative minimum. So once you classify that, uh, you get that the only critical value which needs to be tested is x equals 6. Definitely write about that in your problem. Say that the only relative minimum is at x equals 6. The other two relative, uh, the other two critical values are not minimums. Okay, here are the critical values and the endpoints put together. Remember, we don't have to test x equals 0 and we don't have to test x equals 4 because those are not relative minimums. So, start off with the fundamental theorem of calculus, which touches basically every problem that we do. We know that f of 6 equals negative 1, so our fundamental theorem of calculus becomes the integral from 6 to x of f prime of t is f of x minus f of 6, and that is equal to f of x minus negative 1, since f of 6 is negative 1. Simplify that to x, uh, the integral from 6 to x of f prime of t equals f of x plus 1, and you got yourself the driving equation for this problem. Any f of x is equal to the integral of f prime from 6 to x minus 1. Uh, for the integral part of this problem, you are going to use the area between the curve and the x-axis. So it's probably a good thing right now if we compute all of those areas. Um, if I was taking this test, I would you know, write down those integrals and what those areas are equal to. So here's our first region between the curve and the x-axis. It's a triangle, so the area is 1 half base times height, or just 15 over 2. There's our second region. It is a circle, or a semicircle. So the area of a semicircle is 1 half pi r squared, which in this case simplifies to 2 pi. Remember, of course, that the integral from, I think this is from 0 to 4, is going to be negative 2 pi. So keep that one also in your pocket. Here's the third shape, another triangle. Base is 2, height is 2, so the area is 2. The integral is negative 2. And then our last geometric shape is that triangle at the end. The base is 4, the height is 2, 
So the area is one half base times height or just four. You're gonna use all four of those areas to help you compute integral or yeah, to compute the definite integrals. So now we're gonna evaluate the candidates. Uh, we only have three that we need to test. The first one is negative five. So for that upper limit, we're gonna substitute a negative five and our fundamental theorem of calculus becomes the integral from six to negative five of f prime equals f of negative five plus one. Now you'll probably notice that this integral is in the wrong order. The lower limit needs to be um, smaller than the upper limit. So we're gonna correct that. We're gonna write the ship here at the cost of that negative sign in front of the integral. So now you have the negative integral from negative five to six of f prime equals f of negative five plus one. And you are ready to do this with area. So just as a review, the area from negative five to six is gonna be this triangle, which is 15 halves, minus this semicircle, which area is two pi, minus this semicircle, which is an area of two. Substitute that into the integral. So the integral is the same thing as a negative of 15 halves minus 2 pi minus 2. Um, and that's going to be equal to f of negative 5 plus 1. You have a calculator, so go ahead and simplify that out. And you get that f of negative 5 is negative 0 0.21681. Now there's a little bit of algebra that I didn't show here. Um, you know, you're all calculus students, you can figure that part out. Uh, anything else to say? Yeah, one more thing to say. Since we are looking for a minimum value, this is one time that I would not recommend leaving this in terms of pi, just because you're gonna need to say which one of these values is smaller, which one of these values is greater. And that's a lot easier if you're looking at the decimal approximation. Okay, let's get to the next critical value. The next critical value is f of 6. This is a little bit easier than the other ones because you will notice that the lower limit is 6 and the upper limit is 6. So that integral is equal to 0. So 0 is equal to f of 6 plus 1. Therefore, f of 6 equals negative 1. Pretty painless. The next um, coordinate, the next value of x that we need to test is x of 10 sorry, f of 10. So f of 10 is the integral from six to 10 of f prime of t dt. That integral is just that, the last triangle here uh, from six to 10. And that area was four. So four is equal to f of 10 plus one. f of 10 is equal to three. And now we can organize our values in a table. I'm going to let you notice that I actually computed f of 0 and f of 4, those other two critical values. You don't need to do that. I'm just doing that because I guess I got nothing better to do. Um, if you left it off of your chart, as long as you write down why you're leave, relieving it off your chart, you're going to be okay. Um, so then you now analyze this. Uh, f of 0 is a maximum. Again, you wouldn't need to put that into your chart. But the minimum value occurs when uh, x equals 6. And that minimum value is negative 1. Notice negative 1 is smaller than all of the other values. So we have enough to answer our question. Uh, the minimum value of f for x between negative 5 and 10 is negative 1. Remember, they're asking you for the minimum value of f, literally the minimum value of f. So that is the minimum value of f. Try to mimic the question stem in your answer, and you're going to be great. Number b, let g be equal to sine of 3 minus f prime of x. Let's find g prime of 6. So take the derivative of g, basically. This is a chain rule problem, 
So it is a calculus AB skill. So this will go into your AB subscore. Actually, the previous one is, was as well. So AB part, another AB part. Uh, chain rule, let's focus in on that. The chain rule is the derivative of y with respect to x it can be reinterpreted as the derivative of y with respect to a dummy variable, variable u multiplied by the derivative of u with respect to x. Uh, written another way, we got ddx of fu is equal to ddx of uh, fu multiplied by ddx of ux. This is a typo over here. That should be d du. That looks better. Uh, d du of f of u multiplied by du dx. Uh, well, we're going to let u be equal to f prime of x. So then our function becomes d dx of sine u is the same thing as d du of sine u uh, multiplied by d dx of u. So, d du of u, that's equal to the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So we got cosine of u multiplied by the derivative of u, so the derivative of 3 minus f prime of x. So what's the derivative of 3 minus f prime of x? Well, that is negative f double prime of x. So here's our equation for g prime. Now we're just going to substitute 6. So g prime of 6 is equal to cosine of f prime of 6, uh, 3 minus f prime of 6, multiplied by negative f double prime of 6. So let's just try to find out f of 6 and f double prime of 6. Um, if f of 6 is actually pretty easy, it's given to you right here. f of 6 is negative 1 f double prime of 6 would be the derivative of f prime of x evaluated when x equals 6. So to get the derivative of f prime of 6, you're just going to have to find the slope of f prime. So the slope of this line is 2, and I'm picking on this line because right here, that's x equals 6. So f double prime of 6 is equal to the slope of the line, so f double prime of 6 is equal to 2. Actually, I'm remembering we need to find f prime of 6, right? f prime of 6 is just this graph. So f prime of 6 is the y coordinate here. The y coordinate is 0. So uh, writing down on our paper, f of 6 is negative 1, f prime of 6 is 0, and f double prime of 6 is is 2. Getting back to the problem, f prime is 6, f double prime is negative 2, so we get g prime of 6 is equal to cosine of 3 minus 0 multiplied by negative 2, which is just negative 2 cosine 3. Now it's not worth it in this instance for you to actually calculate the cosine of 3 since that is a known constant, you don't have to calculate cosine of 3. You can just leave it the way it is. Don't waste your time buttoning it into your calculator because you are on a timed test. And this is a way to gain at least five seconds on your test. And who knows when those five seconds are going to be um, important to you. Okay, letter C. Let h be the particular solution for the differential equation, um, and then we're supposed to figure out f of 3, or h of 3. So if you're not, how do I say this? If you don't have the presence of mind right now to figure out that if you need to get from x equals 5 to x equals 3 with two steps, and each step better be equal to negative 1, then you're going to have to rely on the equation where delta x is b minus a divided by n, which gives you negative 1. Of course, I highly recommend that you just kind of think about it a little bit better. Uh, you don't need to memorize another formula. You have enough of those already. 
Now that you know delta x is negative 1, <clears throat> you can just go ahead and get to the chart. This is the way we do it in my class. Uh, we go through this. We show the very long way with all of the equations, but then at the very end we settle in on the fact that just doing it in the chart is a little bit faster. So uh, at the very least on your notes, you should have the first row of Euler's method on your on a paper somewhere near you when you take the test. Okay, so we're starting off at h5 equals 6. So that means my x-coordinate is 5 and my y-coordinate is 6. Of course, delta x is always going to be negative 1. Now, the most difficult part of this Euler's method problem is to figure out the slope, dy dx. So dy dx, uh, you'll notice that dy dx is given in this formula up here. So let's figure out where each of these parts come from. The first one is y, highlighted here. And y is just the y-coordinate. So that's why we're putting the 6 there. The next part is f prime of x. So what is the x we're going to be putting in f prime? Well, it happens to be 5 because this table or this line of the table always pertains to x equals 5. Well, what is f prime of 5? Well, f prime of 5, if you remember, comes from the uh, graph, the line graph that we had at the very beginning of the problem. This line graph is a line graph of f prime. So f prime of 5 is just the y coordinate, which happens to be negative 2. And then, of course, in our denominator, we get x. x is just the x coordinate. And for this row of the table, the x coordinate is always equal to 5. The rest of this is mathematical, or I guess arithmetical. Arithmetical? Arithmetic. To get delta y, you're going to multiply delta y times m, and you'll get negative 8 fifths. And the last part of this table is x plus delta x and y plus delta y. If you add all of those together, you get the next coordinate, which is 4, 4.4. 4. We want to approximate h of 3, and our x coordinate is not there yet. Our x coordinate is currently 4, so we need to go to the second line of our table. I'm pretty sure that when you do this, if you do this on your AP test, there'll only be two lines in your table. Um, any more than that, and it's just kind of redundant information for the people grading your test. Okay, um, delta x is negative 1. Let's find out m. m is y, which is 4.4, minus x, and if you go back to the line graph, you'll see that the x-coordinate at x equals, or the uh, y-coordinate, which is f prime, um, at x equals 4, is equal to 0, divided by the x-coordinate, and you'll get 1.1. All right, 1.1, m is going to be delta x multiplied by 1.1, so we got negative 1.1. And then the y coordinate is going to be, sorry, the x coordinate is going to be x plus delta x, which is 3. And the y coordinate is going to be y plus delta y, which is 3.3. .3. This last entry in our table, that's going to be our approximation. h of 3 is approximately equal to 3.3. .3. I know my students are usually really happy to see an Euler's question or Euler's method question because they're really not too difficult. As long as you can remember that first line of the table, it's just a mechanical process. Letter D is our emotion problem. Uh, we already read through it. So th the first thing I want to highlight to you is, do you recognize that formula? It is the total distance traveled formula from x equal from t equals a to t equals b. So when we interpret this, we're going to have to interpret this as a total distance traveled. Okay, um, and in order to evaluate that integral, we're going to use area yet again. Since this is an absolute value, 
you need to find the absolute value of each shape's area, not the absolute value of the integral, the integral of the absolute value. Slight difference here. So to show you what, to show you what I mean, I'm going to take all of those areas that we computed for part A. It's a good thing we computed those areas in part A because uh, we've used them on at least two, three of the, yeah, three of these parts of the question so far. So it's a worthwhile time investment. Okay, so we're going to take the absolute value of that first area. And the first area was a negative, no, yeah, from zero to uh, four. The integral was negative two pi. So we're just going to take the absolute value of negative two pi, which is just two pi. The second triangle below the axis, the area or the integral was negative two. So the area is just two. And then that last one is already positive area of four. So when you add that together, you get six plus two pi. Not worth it for you to turn that into a decimal approximation since that's already the answer. And you don't have to do any comparing. Interpretation wise, the particle traveled a total of 6.2 pi meters. There is that total distance traveled. Meters, we get that from the question here, meters. Uh, in the 10 second interval, seconds, meters per second. Uh, so uh, in the 10 second interval from uh, 0 to 10. This is a nice interpretation. The particle traveled a total of 6 plus 2 pi meters in the 10 second interval from uh, 0 is less than equal to t is less than equal to 10. Part E. This is the last part of the question. You knew there had to be a question about Taylor's uh, polynomial. So here it is. Uh, We've been noticing that every time we get a Taylor's polynomial question, there has been the construction of that Taylor's polynomial. In the very first of these practice problems that we did, there was a question uh, regarding the alternating series error. So be on the lookout for that. Refer to the video of, uh, a couple of days ago on uh, practice problem number two and you'll see what I mean. Just like the last two times we did this, you're gonna start off with the formula for any Taylor polynomial of order three. Next step is to substitute here. You know you want this Taylor polynomial to be centered around x equals six, so you replace every value, every time you see the variable c, you're gonna replace that with a six. Also, you know you want this to be a Taylor polynomial of k, so you're changing every f into k. Once you've done that, it's time for the process of computing every value of k. The first one is k equals 6. They gave you an equation for k right here. So, uh, we're just going to substitute 6 into the formula. So k6 is equal to 2 times 6 minus the integral from 6 to 6 of ft dt. Thank God the integral is from 6 to 6 because it's easy to compute. It's just 0. So k6 is 12. Take the formula that you had and you're going to replace k6 with 12. k prime is going to be the derivative of the equation of k. So we're going to take the derivative of 2x minus the derivative of the integral. So two things going on here. First is just or how do you take the derivative of a polynomial. Second part is how do you take the derivative of an integral. So the derivative of the integral, you just substitute the upper limit. Lastly, substitute 6. Uh, just remember, 
derivative first and then you substitute. Always in that order. Here we have k prime of 6 is equal to 2 minus f of x, which is 2 minus f of 6. What was f of 6? Well, remember at the beginning of the problem, we had f of 6 equals negative 1. So uh, 2 minus negative 1 is 3. Again, take the formula that you have, have so far, and you're going to substitute 3 for k prime. So we're halfway finished here. K double prime is a derivative of our equation for K prime. So the derivative of 2 minus F of X. What is the derivative of 2 minus F of X? It's just negative F prime of X. So substitute K X equals 6 and you get K double prime of 6 is negative F prime of 6. What is F prime of 6? Back to the table again, f prime of 6 was 0. Uh, maybe you remember it from one of the other problems that we did. So k double prime of 6 is 0. Just like before, take what you have so far, substitute a 0. And lastly, k triple prime is just a derivative of our equation for k double prime, which was negative f prime. The derivative of negative f prime is negative f double prime. Take 6 and substitute and you will get negative k double prime of 6. Uh, if you will remember in one of the earlier problems we also computed f double prime of 6 and it was negative 2. So they're kind of reusing the same uh, constants, the same values in order, probably in order so you don't have to, in order for you to not have to keep referring up to the chart. So you might be a good idea to write down all of these values in the margin of the paper. Anytime you compute, for example, f double prime of six, you may want to write it on the side of the paper so you can keep referring back to it. K double prime or k triple prime is negative two. So you're going to take the formula that you have so far and you're going to substitute negative two. And that's it. Don't simplify it. It's a little bit of a waste of time. Uh, definitely don't expand any of those uh, binomials. Don't expand any of that. You don't even need to multiply. You, don't, you can just leave this here. Everyone's going to say that's zero. It's the correct answer. Any, all, all anyone ever needs here is a cat, you know the power to multiply two things together. So this is a perfectly valid answer. I highly recommend you don't try to uh, multiply this any further. So that's it. Whew, it took us a good half an hour to get through this one. Also, uh, I know this was only a 15 minute question or it's supposed to be a 15 minute question. So you're gonna have time problems. Uh, make sure you know that anytime you compute or what we were talking about just earlier, Anytime you compute, you want to make sure that you uh, write down your computations in a margin just in case you need it later in the problem. So for example, we used f of f prime of 6 multiple times, so write that down in the margin. We used f double prime a couple times, write that down in the margin. Um, it might be a good idea if you even did the integrals, although who, who knows. Good luck to you. You all deserve the five. Get the five, and I'll see you next time.